Every matter in this universe is a combination of just 118 elements or atoms. But these 118 elements can bond and arrange in enormous numbers of ways which we call molecules. With only 118 types of building blocks, we can create everything from complex molecules to a universe. Every atom contains protons, neutrons, and electrons. The number of protons in an atom is called its atomic number. For example, a hydrogen atom has only one proton, so its atomic number is one. A carbon atom has six protons, so its atomic number is six. A gold atom has 79 protons, so its atomic number is 79. The number of protons in an atom determines the kind of atom or element. So first we give numbers to the atoms and order them with their atomic numbers. Here, at the top of the table, we keep the hydrogen atom with an atomic number of 1. The atom with an atomic number of 118 is the organesson. So we place at the very end of the table. In nature, the number of electrons in an atom is equal to the number of protons. Protons have a positive charge, and electrons have a negative charge. To balance charges, they occur in equal numbers, making the atom neutral. For example, a carbon atom has six positive charges from protons and six negative charges from electrons. These charges cancel each other out, so the overall atomic charge is zero. Electrons orbit the nucleus in different shells. The first shell closest to the nucleus is n is equal to 1. The second shell is n is equal to 2. The third shell is n is equal to 3, and so on. The formula for finding the maximum number of electrons a shell can hold in a shell is 2n square. So the first shell can hold up to 2 electrons, second shell up to 8, third shell up to 18, fourth shell up to 32 electrons. This arrangement is known as Bohr's model of electron configuration. Now take a potassium element which has 19 protons and 19 electrons. Its electron configuration is, the first shell has 2 electrons, second shell 8 electrons, and third shell 8 electrons, and in the fourth shell 1 electron. But here is one confusion. Since the third shell can hold up to 18 electrons, why does it have only 8 electrons instead of 9? To understand this, we need to look into subshells, which are introduced by the quantum model. Each shell is divided into subshells, S, P, D, and F. The S subshell can hold up to 2 electrons. The P subshell can hold up to 6 electrons. The D subshell can hold up to 10 electrons and the F subshell can hold up to 14 electrons. The first shell has only one subshell, which is S, so it can hold two electrons. The second shell has two subshells, S and P, so it can hold two plus six total of eight electrons. The third shell has three subshells, S, P, and D, so it can hold two plus six plus 10, total of 18 electrons. The fourth shell has four subshells, S, P, D, and F, so it can hold 2 plus 6 plus 10 plus 14 total of 32 electrons. So far, everything matches with Bohr's model in terms of capacity. However, electrons start filling from the lowest energy levels. To understand this, we need to look into Madelung's N plus L rule. This rule determines the order in which electrons occupy subshells. We already know that N is the shell number. The first shell is n is equal to 1, the second shell is n is equal to 2, and so on. But what is L? L is the quantum number of a subshell, called azimuthal quantum number. The S subshell, L is equal to 0, P subshell, L is equal to 1, D subshell, L is equal to 2, and F subshell, L is equal to 3. Now let's return to the potassium atom, which has 19 electrons. We wondered, since the third shell can hold up to 18 electrons, why does it have only 8 instead of 9? Here's where the Madelung's rule explains the order. Electron filling starts from 1s orbital. 
The first shell has 1s orbital. The second shell has 2s and 2p. The third shell has 3s, 3p, and 3d. And the fourth shell has 4s, 4p, 4d, and 4f. The number before each subshell is the shell number. Orbitals with lower n plus l values fill first. For the 1s orbital, n is equal to 1, l is equal to 0. So the n plus l value is 1. Thus, electrons fill the 1s orbital first. The s orbital can hold two electrons. So, potassium's first two electrons go here, leaving 17 electrons. The second shell, which has the 2s and 2p subshells, can hold up to 2 plus 6 total of 8 electrons. Applying the n plus l rule, the 2s orbital has an n plus l value of 2, and the 2p orbital has an n plus l value of 3. Thus, electrons fill the 2s orbital and then 2p orbital. Eight electrons are occupied in the second shell, leaving nine electrons. Next, we move on to the third shell. It has three subshells, 3s, 3p, 3d, and can hold up to 2 plus 6 plus 10 total of 18 electrons. Here, we will apply the n plus l rule. So the 3s orbital has a value of 3, the 3p orbital has a value of 4, and the 3d orbital has a value of 5. This means electrons will first fill the 3s orbital, then the 3p orbital, and finally the 3d orbital. But there is one more thing that needs to be considered. Look at the 4s orbital of the fourth shell. Its n plus l value is 4, which means it has lower energy than the 3d orbital. Therefore, after two electrons fill the 3s orbital and six electrons fill the 3p orbital, the next remaining one electron will enter the 4s orbital instead of the 3d orbital because it has a lower n plus l value than the 3d orbital. Thus, the electron configuration of a potassium atom is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s1. This is why the electron arrangement of the potassium atom is 2881, not 289. In a potassium atom, the first shell has two electrons, the second shell has eight, the third shell has eight, and the fourth shell has one electron. If we apply n plus l rule to the rubidium element, the electron configuration will be 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s2, 3d10, 4p6, 5s1. Here the 4s orbital is filled before the 3d orbital, and the 5s orbital is filled before the 4d and 4f orbitals. For clarity and better understanding of the periodic table, the configuration can also be written in order of increasing shell number as 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 3d10, 4s2, 4p6, 5s1. For the potassium element, the fourth shell is the outermost shell, which contains one electron. This electron is called a valence electron. In a potassium atom, the valence electron is placed in the s orbital, similar to potassium. Other elements also have only one valence electron in the s orbital. Hydrogen, lithium, sodium, rubidium, cesium, and francium. So we arrange these elements in a vertical column in order of increasing atomic number. Hydrogen, with an atomic number of 1, is placed at the top of the column, while francium, with an atomic number of 87, is placed at the bottom. We name this column group 1, so all elements in group 1 have one valence electron in the s orbital. Now, let's look at the electron configuration of the calcium element. It has two valence electrons in the s orbital, so we will arrange the same type of elements in another column, in order of increasing atomic number. In this column, we will have helium, beryllium, magnesium, calcium, strontium, barium, and radium. We name this column group 2. The s orbital can hold a maximum of two electrons. After that, we begin filling the p orbital. For example, an aluminum atom has 13 electrons, and its electron configuration is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p1. Here, we can see the last energy level ends in a p orbital with one valence electron. And look at the gallium atom. 
it has 31 electrons. Then the electron configuration of this atom will be 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 3d10, 4s2, 4p1. This atom also ends with a p orbital with one valence electron. Similarly, other elements such as boron, indium, thallium, and nihonium have single valence electrons in p orbital. So we can order this in a column based on increasing atomic number or electron numbers. We will name this group as group 3. Now look at the silicon atom. It has 14 electrons. Its electron configuration is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p2. If we look at this configuration, we see that the outermost shell has two valence electrons, which are in the p orbital. Similarly, we can group together elements that have two valence electrons in the p orbital. Carbon, silicon, germanium, tin, and lead. We name this column group 4. In the same way, elements with three valence electrons in p orbital belong to group 5, four valence electrons in the p orbital belong to group 6, five valence electrons in the p orbital belong to group 7, and six valence electrons in p orbital belong to group 8. So far, we arranged elements based on valence electrons in the s and p orbitals. Now look at the scandium element, which has 21 electrons. With increasing energy levels, its electron configuration is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s2, 3d1. Or it can be arranged by increasing shells. 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 3d1, 4s2. In scandium, the electrons in both the 3d and 4s orbitals are considered valence electrons. By energy order, the 3d orbital contains higher energy electrons. In this element, the d orbital has one valence electron, and together with the two electrons in the outermost s orbital, there are a total of three valence electrons. These three valence electrons can be transferred to other elements during chemical reaction. Similarly, elements such as yttrium, lanthanum, and actinium share similar electron configuration. This means we can create a new group with the configuration of D1S2. Now look at the titanium element, which has 22 electrons. With increasing energy levels, the electron configuration is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s2, 3d2. Or arranged by increasing shells, 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 3d2, 4s2. In this element, the d orbital contains two valence electrons, and together with two electrons in the outermost s orbital, there are a total of four valence electrons. These four valence electrons are involved in chemical reactions. Similarly, elements such as zirconium, hafnium, and rutherfordium share similar electron configurations. So we can create a new group with the configuration d2s2. Similarly, we can group elements with five valence electrons together in the d and s orbitals into one group, and do the same for those with 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12 valence electrons, each in their own separate group. Now we have created individual groups by increasing the number of valence electrons in the s, p, and d orbitals. Apart from these arranged elements, the remaining ones are those in the f orbital. We can arrange these in a separate group. If we look at the electron configuration of elements with f orbital valence electrons, it may feel little confusion due to the presence of more electron shells. However, since all f orbital elements are grouped together in a single section of the periodic table, it will not affect our overall understanding. So let's stop here for now and continue with the s, p, and d orbital elements. Let's compare the lithium element with the neon element. The outermost shell of lithium is shell number 2, and the outermost shell of neon is also 2. So we can create a horizontal row whose valence electrons are in the second shell. Now compare sodium, aluminum, and silver. They all have their valence electrons in the third shell. We can arrange them along with other elements whose electrons end in the third shell in a single row. Similarly, Elements with valence electrons in the 4th, 5th, 6th, and 7th shells 
can be arranged in their own individual rows. Hydrogen and helium have one and two electrons respectively, so their electrons are located in the first shell. These first shell elements will be placed at the top of the table. We can then reorder the elements with the same valence shell number by increasing their atomic number or number of electrons. For example, in the fourth row, after calcium, the next element will be scandium, because calcium atoms have 20 electrons and scandium has 21. We will change the group number as the number of electrons increases. So group 1 includes elements like hydrogen and lithium. Group 2 starts with barium. Group 3 starts with scandium, and group 13 starts with boron, and so on. Based on the shell number, we assign the same numbers to the rows as the period number. This means that elements with valence electrons in the first shell are in period 1. Those with valence electrons in the second shell are in period 2, and so on. The elements whose outermost electrons occupy the s orbital are called s block elements. Similarly, based on the outermost occupied orbital, elements are classified into s block, p block, d block, and f block elements. Elements with atomic numbers 57 to 71 and 90 to 103 belong to the f block. They are placed separately in the periodic table. An increasing period number indicates that atoms have more electron shells and therefore a larger atomic radius. This is why a potassium atom is larger than a lithium atom. Although the period number primarily reflects the size of an atom, the group number plays a much more significant role in determining an atom's properties and chemical behavior. The S-block elements are highly reactive metals divided into two groups, alkali metals and alkaline earth metals. The P-block elements consist of metals, nonmetals, and metalloids. Metalloids exhibit both metallic and nonmetallic characteristics. The non-reactive noble gases are also located within the P-block. The D-block elements are known as transition metals, while the F-block elements are referred to as inner transition metals.